Sean Lane. Wow. Where shall I begin? Sean Lane is part of my life since the early 2000s, 2005. And as you all know, these were different times. Mm -hmm. I was buying these guitar magazines and there was an article featuring Sean Lane and Jonas Helborg. Remember, it's 2004, 2005, somewhere around there, I think. And I was absolutely heavy into guitar. I mean, through that interview, I started being interested in, in Sean Lane, but I never heard his playing, you know. But that interview um, really made me curious. The um, internet got really funny for us guys back then, you know. There were things like Kazaa, file sharing platforms, where you just could type in something and you could download it. My first experience of Sean Lane came through that, through, through these platforms. And when I listened to that, when, I, when I've seen it suddenly in imagery and sound, it was... I mean, wow, oh. that was, that was another one of these moments that you like the most prolific guitar player you've ever seen. I mean, it's nuts. This guy plays absolutely insane. I mean, you know, it's it's like um, Da Vinci or, or, you know, it can't get any better than that and more creative and more, what, I don't know. This is just, I've listened to it constantly. I never took a break of Sean Lane during these past almost 20 years. So I didn't listen to it on a daily basis, but I always somehow return to Sean's music. I was also browsing the web for Sean Lane interviews, like things you don't find on YouTube. Every time I was exposed to him, I was again like convinced that I've listened to one of the absolute grand masters, really. I mean, imagine myself finding out the first time that he plays the piano. And I mean, he has that same technical, I don't know, super freakish. He has that same technical prowess than he has on the guitar. I'm sure it's maybe a little less, but it's... He can play in octaves perfectly. I mean, he can play in any time signature, whatever he wants on the piano. Imagine that. It's like, what? Sean has an incredible harmonic vocabulary and rhythmic vocabulary. I mean, if I listen to, I'm surprised of, you know, you know I've listened, like I said, I've listened to many guitar shredders, really. Like, incredibly talented technicians. But somehow I got tired of listening to um, a The Dorian track, jam track for five minutes, basically, you know. Um, But with Sean, it was more like um, your ears, they were oh, served like, mm, it's like a 12 course meal in a absolutely delicious surrounding where, where you just exposed to one of the greatest tastes music can offer. And if you look at Sean's music, not only from a guitar standpoint of view, but just at what it is, you know, art. 
um, a, a crafted product by a human being, you have to rank that product. I'm sorry to use that name, but it's like Michelangelo's David, a monumental musical um, testimony. Those who know, they know, and those who don't know, well, we're talking about a literal prodigy, a genius. He was a self-taught musician in the end. He was not, he did not have a degree in music, you know? Like, nowadays, if you want to be a musician, you go to Manhattan School of Music or Berkeley or Jazz Schule, wherever, and that's how you become a musician, you know? You do a classical or a jazz-based studies. Bachelor's, Master's, you can even go so far to get your PhD, I suppose. Sean didn't do that. He was a self-taught musician. He was a self-taught producer. Um, what I got out of him was that he must have been like a sponge. Um, he soaked it all in. Music, um, biology, mathematics, filming. Um, for him, it somehow seemed to be everything is one. And here we had a guy that was connecting the dots, you know, the interdisciplinary dots between the things. And so he was already back then a three, a 360 degree kind of person that was way, way, way before YouTube. Um, Today you can do that somehow out of your living room. I have a proper respect of this man's work. Yeah, it is. I. It has a special place in my life, this music. The person Sean Lane also fascinates me because you hear quite a lot of people um, mentioning that they were highly touched by this gentleman, that he was a wonderful, must have been a wonderful person. Um, he mentioned many times or multiple times that he grew up in a very um, encouraging household. Um, he started playing guitar very young, piano, cello, um, and it was obvious that he is a um, out of the ordinary uh, musician pretty early, but it was all um, under the wings um, of his family. Um, I'm not aware of the, of the composition of his family. I think there were multiple children, a sister, I don't know how it's connected because um, Epilogue for Lisa, that piece is, is a tribute to a family member that passed away early in his life. So I think, please correct me on that if I'm wrong. Yeah, family must have meant a lot to him. And then, yeah, there is that musician, a teenage prodigy. And suddenly with 14 or 15, he goes out on tour. And, um, and imagine, yeah, you can make music and you can realize that you are special and you have talent and it gives you an absolute wonderful joy. But then suddenly with 15, you're in a adult world. You're not in a kid's world anymore. You're in a adult world with schedules and and um, with dates and contracts and Sean said in an interview that he was burned out by the time he was 18 um, from touring and that he he wanted to get back to his family he married um, he settled down in his childhood home I think and married when he was 18 settle down to marry with 18 boy that's that's a bold choice as well but it also shows somehow maybe how he as a human being was if i see him speak if i 
if I read his spirit through the screen and I try to go into the things he says and maybe around the thing he says, then I feel like a very sensitive person and and the music he did throughout his life was was just that it was an incredible expression of himself um man and no matter what he did if it if it was um the indian raga type of thing um shakti-esque kind of thing if you want so i know john mclaughlin also had a huge impact in on him incredibly virtuosic i mean whoa i mean the virtuosity you see from this guy um is incredible it's some of the most virtuosic things you will ever see it's like roger federer playing tennis or magnus carlsen playing chess or it was something else sean is a genius that goes beyond that I mean, he's a master songwriter and he's a master composer, orchestrator. Um, he is a pioneer in digital um, producing, digital music production. He must have had more experience in music production um, in a digital realm than any of his peers, you know. Um, and man, and the musicians he play with, oh, I... I absolutely love this mus the musicians that he play with. There is that drummer, man. I don't know. What's his name? Oh, I love this drummer, man. Every time I hear this drummer, I'm like, just, I'm just like, what the hell? This is, ah, oh, such a tragic story, his life somehow, because, man, he passed away in 2003. He was like, was born in 63, I think. 2003, I mean, wow. Yeah, 40 years, wow. And he must have dealt with quite some health issues because if you see his body shape, you, yeah, it's out of the ordinary. Well, in my life, throughout my life, I've listened, you know, to a lot of jazz music, a lot of metal music, lots of film score, sound design. I also use all these elements in my work as a audio producer, you know. Sometimes I use a guitar as a soundtrack, sometimes I use MIDI, sometimes I use my voice. Um, so I produce audio on a professional basis. So um, what I've exposed my ears to during these past like 30 years of listening very very carefully to music um, I have to say that Sean stands out as one of the best to ever do it yeah I mean he was one of the best guitar players to ever walk the surface of the planet. I mean, he's up there with Paco de Lucia. Um, if I go through my CD collection, I have a, not, a, not an incredible big, but, but let's say a couple of hundred records. If I go through that, that's a time where I bought a lot of CDs. There are a ton of guitar players in there. But there are some special guitar players in there that that I listen today, that I can listen today, and I'm just like, wow, I still dig it. I it still resonates to me. It wow, it's still fascinating. Somehow I would love to interact with people that actually knew him. Just because I think we still might be in the time frame of where we could collect eyewitness account of this fine man. And, well, I think if you're out there and you've met John Lane, hey, let me know. Write it in the comment sections or, or 
let's talk together, let's hang out and record it and put it out on YouTube. Would be great. With that being said, I hope you enjoy yourself and see you around next time.